Hi folks, today I want to talk to you about what I consider a very important book uh, called Tending the Wild by M. Cat Anderson. It, it's a significant contribution towards our understanding of how the Native Americans of the past in California lived with their environment and their landscape and all the things that they actually did. What, um, what Anderson points out is that anthropologists who studied the people who are here who became part of the mission system and who either were killed off or eventually blended into the, the, uh, the larger society, their knowledge of plants uh, was, was quite comprehensive. Their way of interacting with the landscape was rather complex, but they were classified as hunter-gatherers. And this was largely due to the ignorance of the people studying them because they, they didn't have farms and that led those observers to think that they just used the landscape as it was. But what Anderson points out in this book is that there were, there were numerous ways in which the environment was improved and the individual plants were worked so that they were better producers of the, the nuts and the berries and the greens that they produced, and, as well as the shoots for weaving. And one of the primary tools was fire. Okay, this, it's been largely disputed in the past, but people are coming to realize that fire was a major tool of what has been known to be called passive agriculture. And I want to read a little bit from the book. Anderson says, fire was the most significant, effective, efficient, and widely employed vegetation management tool of the California Indian tribes. So Anderson describes the, the way the fields would be burned and uh, deliberate burning increased the abundance and density of edible tubers, greens, fruits, seeds, and mushrooms. And she has tables uh, to show that in, in uh, specific detail. It enhanced the feed for wildlife. It controlled the insects and diseases that could damage wild foods and basketry materials. It increased the quantity and quality of material used for basketry and cordage and encouraged the sprouts used for making household items, granaries, fish weirs, clothing, games, hunting and fishing traps and weapons. It also removed dead material and promoted growth through the recycling of nutrients and decreased the plant competition and maintained specific plant community types such as coastal prairies and montane meadows. I remember when I was studying um, with a woman from Kentucky about the use of acorns, she used to point out to me how fire was a critical tool of uh, passive agriculture because it opened up the environment for light, killed off the bugs, it laid down a layer of fertilizer, it hardened the acorn shells so they would last longer. So this book uh, covers that and many more topics. I mean, this is like 450 pages. She goes into great detail on the land management methods, how the shoots, we, we know through old photographs that the shoots that are produced today from um, the, uh, the, the, the various plants that are used for weaving basketry, the deer, the deer grass is one, the, um, I can't think of the name, there's another one that's used in basketry, but we know that the shoots are a lot longer and straighter when they're allowed to go wild they're all, there's all kind of uh, thick growth, thick undergrowth, and they don't grow quite as healthy. So uh, it's another perspective on who the people were that were displaced. It's an incredible book. It's, a, it's quite an eye-opener. And no, I'm not suggesting we burn down the cities because that, the cities are there now. But in the wild areas, selective fire use can be a vital tool of land management. I highly recommend this book. I hope you get it. Thank you for listening today.